So adding a website into Noodle Tools to cite it correctly is a little bit tricky. Um, it takes a little more work than doing something from the Biography Gale database or World Book Online. Um, so when you have a website, um, we're going to show you how to do that. And if you have a person as your topic, biography.com is a great website to start with. Um, or history.com is great if you are, um, if your topic is an event. Um, I'm just going to go to, let's go to biography.com so we can see how that works. Um, so it, I'm going to open it in its own tab here. So it's a little easier to see. There we go. Um, so then I can search for my person and I am going to stick with Elvis and I'm going to search. Um, so it has quite a few things here. There's a couple of videos. Um, but I'm going to click here on Elvis Presley. Uh, and so then here is lots of information that, again, is going to help me fill out those boxes so that I make sure I have all the information I need on my one pager. Um, so to add your website into Noodle Tools, uh, we're going to go back to Noodle Tools, uh, make sure I'm on my Sources tab. And then we're going to go back to new source. There's my Gale I put in there earlier. So I'm going to click new source. Uh, this time we're going to a website. And this is a web page. Um, so this is unlike Gale. So it is not already cited for me. So now I'm going to have to see if I can fill in as many of these boxes as I can. Um, so the URL is easy. Uh, so let's go back to that. So we're just going to copy that address that's up there. Oops, okay, thank you. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go here and paste it. Um, it's gonna ask me for the date of publication. That's the date that the website was made. Um, and if I look closely here, it shows me here that it was updated January 8th, which actually was today. Um, so you want to use, if you have more than one date, you want to use the one that's the most recent. So in this case, it's January 28th. So I'm going to plug that in there. Um, so this is January. Oh, I could have just typed that in. That probably would have been easier. Um, but here's my 28 and then it is 2020. Oops, not 30. 2020. And then where it says most recent date of access, that's the date that you actually looked at it and started taking notes from it. Um, so that was today. So I'm just gonna click this today and it's gonna fill that part in for me. Um, the next section is where it says contributors. Um, and so here you're gonna choose, this is the author or the editor of that page. Um, so let's click author there. And if I go back, um, so some of these, it may not have all of these pieces of information, but you need to do the best you can to find um, whatever you can that's on there. So we need to find the author's name. And most of the time, it's either going to be right at the top, and this one does not list it there. Um, or if we go down towards the bottom, it may list an author down there at the bottom. Um, oh, here's our citation information. And in this case, it just says biography.com editors. Um, if it had, had a person's name there, then I would put that name in this box. Um, because this is an editor, I'm actually gonna change this to editor. Um, and then I'm just gonna say biography.com editors. Um, it is gonna ask me for the article title um, and it was Elvis Presley. So I'm just filling in, oops as many of these boxes as I can. The name of the website, um, this was biography.com. Um, so Elvis Presley is the name of the web page, which is the smaller section of the whole thing, which is biography.com. Um, so you, that's the difference between those two boxes. And then I think that is it. And then I'm gonna click save and it will magically put all of that information into the right order for me.
and add all the correct punctuation. There we go. So it's got my, that's the author or editor in this case. Um, article titles in quotation marks. There's the website and there's those dates we put in. So all of that information is now put in the right order for me. And I have correctly cited that website. So it's more than just copying and pasting the web address. You do need to have as much of this other information as you can so that you are correctly giving credit to that source. 